Welcome to Lasting Lifestyles, a support program for caregivers and families. Hello, I'm Jenna Corbley, Director of Vibridge Connections, and I'm so pleased to have joining me Dr. Alan Nasser, who's an orthopedic surgeon. Welcome, Dr. Nasser. Good morning, Jenna. Dr. Nasser, you deal with many different conditions coming in, uh, people coming to you for mm -hmm. um, support and help. Uh, one particular is um, joint replacement surgery, I'm sure you deal with quite often. And I'd like to talk about some of the advances in mm -hmm. joint replacement surgery because you hear it so often out there that people are pursuing this. What exactly is joint replacement surgery? Joint replacement surgery is, um, uh, involves the hip, the knee, uh, the shoulder, and there are other joints as well, but those are the larger joints that are replaced. And uh, it's uh, a treatment for arthritis or damage to the cartilage uh, and the bones in your joint. So once a patient has pain, stiffness, uh, grinding, um, you know, limitation of activity uh, from the arthritis in their joints, joint replacement is an excellent option. It removes uh, and, uh, the cartilage and uh, shaves off the edges of the bone and replaces those surfaces with uh, metal and plastic artificial joints, which can, which can then function uh, like the original uh, joint that's being replaced. It sounds like it's definitely improving quality of life and, and, and you know, when you're dealing with pain uh, to, to try and relieve some of that. Now, it, it just sounds so involved. I mean, how, is, how are these procedures done? Well, there are a lot of different procedures, but uh, let's uh, take the, uh, the knee. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's the most common joint that's replaced. Um, uh, it's done by uh, uh, opening up the knee. It's a, it's a surgical incision. We've shrunk down the size of the surgery now, and we can do it through a minimally invasive approach, um, which, which basically means uh, not cutting as, as much skin and not cutting as much tissue underneath. Uh, and then, uh, you know, using power tools, essentially, uh, the bone is reshaped uh, so that it fits exactly with the new components. The, uh, the artificial joints have to fit tightly, uh, and they're glued with bone cement into place. Um, and uh, there's some uh, balancing, and uh, the cuts have to be done in a very precise fashion. Uh, and then the patient will have a good, uh, you know, improved range of motion and uh, much less pain and can return to their uh, activities that they like to do. It's like rebuilding that, that part of the body. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So there is a real difference between the traditional surgery versus the minimally invasive surgery, obviously, for improving quality. Yeah, the, the, the main difference is that we've seen is that uh, with the smaller incision, um, you know, and newer pain management treatments as well, uh, which is uh, something that's coming in, you know, people are focusing more on now. Uh, patients recover faster, have less pain, less blood loss, less stiffness, overall uh, a more comfortable experience and can return to their work or uh, uh, pleasure activities, uh, you know, quick, uh, more quickly. Which is, which is very important, uh, you know, to with... I think that's their biggest fear. Uh, patients' biggest fear with joint replacement is, I'm going to be in pain and I'm going to be mm -hmm. laid up for months. And uh, luckily, that's, that's not the case anymore. But there is some follow-up therapy that's usually Absolutely. involved after? Uh, most, pa most patients do require uh, about a month uh, or even more of physical therapy, uh, maybe two to three times a week, um, especially for knees, to get the most out of their surgery. Now, how long, if, I've, if I had... Um, joint replacement, we'll use the knee as the example, mm -hmm. how long will that last? I mean, is it something that I will possibly have to have done again? Um, yeah, possibly. It depends on your age and your activity level. Uh, I tell patients it's like a set of tires. You know, a tire is going to be good for, let's say, 60,000 miles. Obviously, if you drive hard and, and mm, fast, true. True. <laughs> you could wear it out sooner. So uh, with the new technology that's out there, our knee replacements we expect can last about uh, 20 years. So at some point, uh, you can outlive your knee replacement, um, and you might need to have uh, sort of a tune-up or a tire change. Okay. The whole thing would not need to be changed, uh, but just the, the wearing parts. So in this case, the, there's a polyethylene or a plastic type uh, uh, component in the knee replacement that would have to be changed if it wears out. Now, is joint replacement surgery something that is just primarily done on older adults, or do younger individuals have this? 
Um, well. You know, traditionally it was reserved for 65 and older uh, patients, but um, now with the newer technology, um, the minimally invasive surgery, uh, and the newer uh, equipment that, uh, especially for hips, can last even longer, maybe even 30 years, we're doing joint replacements on 50-year-olds, 60-year-olds, even in some cases on 20-year-olds, if the disease is that severe that they need it. Oh my goodness! So you don't even think about it—a 20-year-old. But then again, you know, it's what what it is that's you know going on within. You know, I, I I've known some 20-year-olds who uh, were in severe agonizing pain, could not get around, mm. could not do their job, uh, and uh, you know they've had, uh, for instance, a hip replacement surgery, and they're very appreciative. You know, they they get their quality of life back, and it's very important. Uh, quality of life is is what really, really, really counts. Uh, what are the uh, recent advances in prosthetic design uh, when you're talking about joint For the, uh, the hip, there have been some excellent uh, recent advances. We use now, uh, the, the traditional surfaces were uh, cobalt chrome and the polyethylene plastic which tended to wear in about 10 to 20 years. Uh, there was a, you know, you could measure it every year, uh, mm -hmm. a certain uh, uh, amount would be worn. With the newer components, ceramic on ceramic, metal on metal, there is virtually no wear. So on the wear simulators, uh, it looks like these things will last, you know, forever, uh, as far as a patient's lifespan is concerned. We don't have 20 or 30 years follow-up yet, though, mm -hmm. so we can't be certain. But w what we do know is that they will last longer than the, uh, the previous technology, and, and that's very exciting. So when I put a hip replacement in a 50-year-old, I can tell them this probably will last you, uh, you know, if things go well, uh, the rest of your life. And, you know, that's what patients want to hear. They want to be coming back for uh, repeat surgeries every few years. Well, who wants to do that? And, you know, we just want to keep moving and we, you know, just... Again, quality of life means so much. Uh, does the patient get to choose their pr prosthetic joint? I mean, That's a very good question. And, uh, you know, it's usually the, the surgeon is the one who decides, and he, uh, uh, he should look, uh, the orthopedic surgeon should look at the picture, look at the patient. Um, for instance, you may not want to use metal on metal in a patient and a woman of childbearing age because. Uh, there's some ions that could be released. So, um, you know, with the help of the physician uh, and the patient should have some input into the process, they can choose what implant is best for that particular patient. It, it's amazing you could even be 